Thomas Alive to Die presents Spiegel For the first 100 years of its history Spiegel was primarily a family business. The company was founded in 1865 by German Jewish entrepreneur Joseph Spiegel who settled in Chicago where his brother-in-law Henry Liebenstein ran a furniture business. With Liebenstein's assistance Joseph Spiegel opened J. Spiegel & Company a small home furnishings retail operation located on Wabash Avenue in Chicago's Loop. In 1871 however the Great Chicago Fire destroyed most of its business district including the Spiegel store. After the fire Joseph Spiegel and a partner named Jacob Kinn rebuilt the business and by 1874 the company was prospering again under their leadership. Kinn retired in 1879. In 1885 Spiegel began running advertisements in several Chicago newspapers and the following year the company moved to a larger building on State Street. Joseph Spiegel's two oldest sons Modi Spiegel and Sidney Spiegel were brought into the business. Spiegel issued its first catalogs in 1888. The catalogs were made available to all potential customers who lived outside the city. Because a mail order system did not yet exist the catalogs served instead to lure people into the downtown store. By 1892 however the business had taken a turn for the worse as many customers were slow to pay for their items. The company went bankrupt that year. The company reinvented itself as Spiegel House Furnishings Company of Chicago in 1893. The principal difference was that the new company like many others in the furniture business sold on credit. The decision to offer installment plans and the timing of the decision that made possible expansion. The new Spiegel was more successful and in 1898 a branch store was opened on Chicago's South Side. Another South Side branch went into operation in 1902. The company's slogan We Trust the People reflected its emphasis on credit merchandising. In 1903 Joseph Spiegel's third son Arthur entered the business with a plan to develop mail order operations. After a couple years of lobbying Arthur convinced the company to open a mail order department and in 1905 Spiegel became the first company to offer credit through the mail. The new service was reflected by the company motto which began to read We Trust the People Everywhere. This and the fact they did not charge interest on extended credit helped increase their business substantially. In 1906 Spiegel's mail order sales were near $1 million. To handle the success of the mail order operation a new company Spiegel Maystern & Company was formed allowing the Spiegel House Furnishings Company to devote its limited resources to conventional retailing rather than assume the debts associated with building up the mail order segment. Arthur was named president of the new company. In 1909 Spiegel introduced the teddy bear to the American consumer for the first time nationwide by offering it in its mail order catalog. The Ideal Toy Company partnered with Spiegel to launch this successful toy venture and Spiegel for many years gifted its employees teddy bears to mark the company's anniversary. Spiegel began to diversify its line of products after 1910 offering apparel for the first time in 1912. After a couple of unsuccessful partnerships with independent clothing manufacturers Spiegel Maystern & Company began offering its own line of women's apparel. Martha Lane Adams, line named after its fictional designer was so successful that it quickly became a wholly owned subsidiary of Spiegel Maystern & Company and earned its own catalog. Martha Lane Adams sales grew to nearly $2 million by 1916. That same year Arthur Spiegel died of pneumonia at age 32. In 1926 company executive Ed Swickard introduced a promotional idea involving congolium floor covering. Swickard engineered a mailing to more than 9 million residences offering a pre-cut congolium package at a low cost. Customer response was such that company sales reached a record $16 million with a net profit of $4 million. In 1928 Spiegel Maystern & Company went public although the Spiegel family retained a controlling interest Spiegel stock prices reached $118 per share the same year. The Great Depression had a negative impact on the business. In 1930 Spiegel's stock dropped to 7 cents per share. I 1931 the Spiegel family began gradually liquidating their retail furniture business. By 1932 the last Spiegel furniture store in Chicago closed its doors. After experiencing considerable economic losses in the early years of the depression Spiegel entered a period of growth and profits beginning in 1933. 
During this time MJ Spiegel took over the leadership of the company. Spurred again by the company's aggressive marketing of their easy credit without interest policy sales rose from $7.1 million in 1932 to more than $56 million by 1937. Furthermore a $300,000 net loss was transformed into $2.5 million in profits. When sales began to plateau in 1938 Spiegel shifted attention to consumers with higher incomes. The company began adding popular brand names to its catalog. The onset of World War II was financially disastrous for Spiegel due to manufacturing had shifted to wartime production many of their popular catalog products were no longer available in significant quantities. A labor shortage also affected the company's operations and when the US government discouraged buying on credit management had to discard its popular no charge for credit policy. In 1942 and 1943 combined the company lost $3.8 million. In 1944 in hopes of reversing the trend Spiegel began to open retail outlets once again hoping to mimic the success of Sears Roebuck & Co. and Montgomery Ward. The same year Spiegel also acquired 46 Sally Dress shops in Illinois and several other regional chains were purchased over the next few years. By 1948 Spiegel was operating 168 retail stores featuring a wide range of merchandise including clothing furniture electronics housewares and auto supplies. After initial success in brick-and-mortar retail the costs of retail operations began to outweigh the benefits. By the mid-1950s Spiegel was again focusing on mail-order sales on credit. Although nearly all of the company's retail outlets were sold off by 1954 several catalog shopping centers were retained so that customers could ask questions and place orders in person with company representatives. In 1955 Spiegel unveiled its budget power plan a liberal policy under which customers were offered a line of credit sometimes as high as $1,000 with low monthly payments. The idea was to add as many names as possible to the customer list. The company also expanded their range of products offered in the catalogs including outdoor power equipment such as mowers and tillers personal watercraft under the name Brookler and musical instruments using the old craftsman name. By 1960 sales greater than $200 million and nearly 2 million people held Spiegel credit accounts. In addition Spiegel began selling pets. In 1965 after 100 years of operation as a family business Spiegel was purchased by Beneficial Finance Company. Spiegel stockholders received shares of Beneficial stock and Spiegel became a subsidiary of Beneficial. Spiegel benefited from television exposure and advertising in the form of prizes given away on several game shows most notably The Price is Right and Let's Make a Deal. Announcers emphasized Spiegel's large catalog offerings and on-air promotional announcements. These programs would award contestants gift certificates of a certain dollar amount toward catalog items giving winners the flexibility to choose their own prizes. Rising interest rates in the mid-1970s made financing credit accounts costly. Also during that time Spiegel began encountering significant competition from discount stores such as Kmart which were rapidly establishing a national presence. In 1976 to help turn the company around Beneficial hired Henry Johnson a veteran of the mail order operations of Montgomery Ward and Avon. One of Johnson's first moves was to streamline management executives were fired and overall employees were reduced by half over the next five years from 7,000 in 1976 to 3,500 in 1981. Johnson also closed Spiegel's all remaining catalog stores. Johnson changed Spiegel's image to that of a fine department store in print. Accordingly the Spiegel catalog was completely revamped low-budget items were replaced by upscale apparel and accessories for career women. Merchandise bearing designer labels began appearing in 1980 when the company introduced a line of Gloria Vanderbilt products. Catalog sales in general boomed during the early 1980s. Spiegel's sales began to grow 25 to 30 percent a year. Although Spiegel still ranked fourth in catalog sales during this time trailing Sears J.C. Penney and Montgomery Ward the company's strategies were being followed very closely by larger competitors. 
In 1982 Beneficial sold Spiegel to Otto Versand GmbH a large private West German company prominent in catalog sales. Between 1982 and 1983 Spiegel's revenue increased from $394 million to $513 million and the company's pre-tax profits more than doubled reaching $22.5 million in 1983. In 1984 control of Spiegel was transferred from Otto Versand itself to members of its controlling family. Under new ownership Spiegel's transformation into an outlet for high-end products continued. In 1984 Spiegel began distributing specialty catalogs in addition to its four primary catalogs 25 of these specialty catalogs were in circulation by 1986 featuring Italian imports plus sized clothing and other specialty items. The same year Spiegel mailed a total of 130 million catalogs at a cost of $100 million and company sales surpassed the $1 billion mark for the first time. In 1987 6 million shares of non-voting stock was sold to the public marking the first time since 1965 that Spiegel was not completely privately held. In 1988 Spiegel acquired Eddie Bauer Inc a retail chain specializing in sportswear and outdoor equipment from General Mills. Eddie Bauer which also has a catalog operation had annual sales of $260 million. In the first year following the acquisition the chain was expanded from 60 to 99 stores. By 1989 Spiegel had become the number three catalog retailer in the United States with a total circulation of 200 million catalogs including 60 different specialty catalogs and an active customer base of over 5 million. In 1990 Spiegel acquired First Consumers National Bank which began issuing credit cards and statements to Spiegel and Eddie Bauer customers. That year the company engaged in an aggressive advertising campaign for career women featuring actress Candice Bergen. The campaign also featured a specialty catalog promoted by Bergen emphasizing the inconvenience of department store shopping and the relative ease of shopping by catalog. The company began to expand its retail outlet operations based on lines from its catalogs. Spiegel stores included For You from Spiegel which offered plus-sized women's apparel and Crayola Kids providing a line of children's apparel first launched in 1991. In spite of these innovations the company's growth stagnated due to the economic recession and earnings declined sharply in 1991. Slight gains were realized the following year as Spiegel's revenue topped $2 billion. Eddie Bauer performed particularly well having grown to 265 stores. In August 1993 Spiegel announced its purchase of Newport News a catalog company specializing in moderately priced women's clothing. Later that year Spiegel published a new specialty catalog e-style a partnership between Spiegel and Ebony magazine featuring a clothing line aimed at African American women. The same year Sears discontinued all catalog sales and Spiegel and other specialty catalog retailers moved quickly to assume the leadership role and increase their own market share. Spiegel reported total revenues of $2.6 billion in 1993. Sales at Eddie Bauer stores reached $1 billion that year bolstered by 30 new locations. Between Spiegel and Eddie Bauer 81 different catalogs with a total circulation of more than 313 million were distributed in 1993. The company's specialty retail stores also performed well in 1993 generating $840 million in sales. In 1994 Spiegel formed a joint venture with Time Warner Entertainment to create two home shopping services for cable television. One of the services was named Catalog One and was planned as a one-channel showcase for a roster of numerous upscale catalog retailers each of which would sell its goods using innovative entertainment style shows. Participants in Catalog One in 1994 besides Spiegel and Eddie Bauer were the Bombay Company Crate and Barrel the Nature Company Neiman Marcus the Sharper Image Viewers Edge and Williams Sonoma. The channel was tested in five markets that year Rochester, New York, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Nashua, New Hampshire, Columbus, Ohio, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Spiegel also teamed up with Lillian Vernon Lands and other catalogers in 1994 to create a CD-ROM catalog. 
the company formed a partnership with MCI Communications Corporation that was aimed at increasing both companies' customer bases. MCI began offering a $35 Spiegel gift certificate to any customer who changed his or her long-distance telephone service to MCI. MCI also offered an additional $20 certificate to any customer who remained an MCI user for at least six months. Around this time Spiegel considered entering the electronic shopping market through an online service such as AOL. This was realized in 1995 but at the expense of the year-old Catalog One venture. By this time Catalog One had begun airing in three more test markets raising its total presence to eight cities. Time Warner and Spiegel decided however there was greater potential gain in launching a website for Catalog One and capitalizing of the internet. Accordingly they scaled back their cable television operation to work on a homepage through Time Warner's popular Pathfinder site. Spiegel also initiated an entrance into the Canadian market in 1995 and planned to distribute its catalogue there by the spring of 1996. Previous strong Eddie Bauer business in Canada aided the company's decision to move in on a larger scale as did the company's good distribution agreements in Canada. Eddie Bauer was also performing well in Japan where the company had built many retail stores throughout the previous years. The year 1996 marked the most profitable year in Eddie Bauer's history and Spiegel's revenues benefited. Eddie Bauer's merchandise was popular enough that the company encountered issues with out-of-stock merchandise occurrence as a direct result of high consumer demand. Spiegel achieved $3.06 billion in 1997 revenue with approximately $1.8 billion from its Eddie Bauer operations. Regardless of Eddie Bauer's contribution to its parent company however the subsidiary had a difficult fiscal year. Following the increase in demand for its products in 1996 the company overproduced and overstocked in 1997. In addition the newer Eddie Bauer merchandise offerings were not as popular as 1996 thus the company was left in oversupply of merchandise. In the August 17, 1998 issue of the Puget Sound Business Journal Eddie Bauer's president and CEO Rick first commented on the company's problems, we were overplanned overstocked overstyled overcolored and it was overwarm and that meant trouble. The year 1998 brought additional challenges for Eddie Bauer and subsequently for Bauer's parent company. Warmer than usual winter weather brought about by a highly publicized weather phenomenon known as El Nino hurt sales figures. Spiegel's overall revenues for the year dropped to $2.94 billion as a result. Spiegel set out to halt its downward spiral and achieve profitability again. The company redesigned its main catalog which in prior years had become something of an amalgam of differing and often conflicting items and images. The company created a catalog solely to target the working woman and organized its main catalog so as not to place $1,000 designer outfits adjacent to $20 casual shirts for example. Eddie Bauer also launched efforts to get itself back on track. By the end of the year Spiegel announced they had improved earnings. Although its revenue decreased during 1998 the company turned a profit and achieved positive cash flow according to a fiscal year-end document released by Spiegel in early 1999. Eddie Bauer's performance disappointed again during the year but Spiegel's other subsidiary catalog Newport News posted solid results. After years of shrinking economic fortunes the company suffered large financial losses and changed ownership three times within the early 2000s. In 2003 Spiegel filed for bankruptcy and reorganization under the bankruptcy code. This included closing 60 Eddie Bauer stores. In 2004 a group headed by Golden Gate Capital Partners and Pangea Holdings Ltd. purchased the Spiegel and Newport News catalog businesses. At the same time the existing reorganizing company retained its Eddie Bauer unit and eventually assumed the subsidiary name as the company name. From 2004 Spiegel Catalog and the women's fashion catalog Newport News operated under the name Spiegel Brands Inc. In 2008 Spiegel was sold again to an investment group led by Granite Creek Partners. In June 2009 Spiegel was sold again to private equity fund Patriarch Partners LLC and then operated under the name Spiegel LLC having done business from 2009 to 2012 as Signature Styles LLC and Artemis LLC respectively. Spiegel's headquarters were then moved to New York City from Chicago. In 2012 the leadership at Spiegel was replaced when the company discontinued its catalog in favor of digital marketing.
In 2016 Spiegel announced it would become the first American fashion digital catalog to feature a transgender model on its cover when Arazi Wanzer was selected. At the same time a number of other patriarch partner companies had begun abruptly shutting down without notice. A number of lawsuits were ultimately filed against patriarch and civil fraud allegations were leveled by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Ultimately during the winter of 2019 Spiegel's website was removed and the company abruptly ceased all operations. If you have any fond memories please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.